hello. Uh, well, by now you already know who I am. But since this presentation is about I love free software, there's an I in there, so I'm going to talk a bit, a bit about myself too, and about love and about free software. The main focus here is that today is the 14th of February. Everyone likes to talk about love during this day. And, well, the free software community sort of said, okay, we should have some more love too because we, we like to be mean to each other sometimes. We say, hey, your software is broken. There's this issue. We just complain about things. Sometimes you say, here's the fix too, and that's nice. But mostly the interactions between people who develop software is there's something not happening as it should. There's a bug in here. You don't maintain your stuff properly. Uh, I don't like your coding style. There's lots of hatred along the ear, and we should really focus on the love that exists because we are all here together because we love to use this stuff and to do this stuff. And so that's what this day is about or what we try this day to be about. So, I love free software. Um, not quite now, but uh, a month ago or so, uh, the Free Software Foundation Europe, uh, knowing that this day was about to come, decided to make a poll on Twitter uh, asking people about uh, which software did they use? Which free software did they use, or for how long did they use uh, free software? Which was an interesting question for me personally because I had to think I didn't recall anymore, and I, I think that the first uh, free software that I used was VI and Tech. Um, I'm not sure if it was the first time that I used free software, for sure, but at least I remember when I used it first time VI to write on DOS uh, a document in tech. And for sure, that those are two pieces of software that I still use nowadays. This presentation is made on LaTeX with uh, Vim as the editor that I used to create it. So. Uh, I still use and still love this software, and sometimes I forget to say to the people behind these that thank you for doing this. I really like it. So, yeah. Um, but uh, it's not just me that loves free software. There's plenty of people year after year that has been doing stuff like picking balloons like this one uh, to celebrate the <laughs> love for free software. And um, here's a picture in Fosdem, I think uh, 2019 or something, when someone was using these balloons and saying, I love free software because I love, or there's love for differences. And it was in front of Debian's booth. So that's why <laughs> this picture is here today. Uh, and me personally, I, I am a user of um, free software, not just the stuff that I use it to use at the beginning, but even currently I use uh, Debian and Ubuntu and Android, which it's easy to forget, but there's lots of free software in there. Um, I also create free software, and the f thing that I like the most about free software is not even as a an user or as a creator, but as a, a member of the free software community. And I, I love free software as a community of like-minded people, uh, more even than the technical aspects of thing. Um, as a community member, I am member of ANSOL, which is the Portuguese 
chapter, let's call it that way, of Free Software Foundation Europe. Um, and so what is ANSOL? ANSOL is the Portuguese association. We have several members in here, including, uh, including Wiki in there that is currently a member of the board. Um, and it's part of the free software movement. I, I am not going to go in much detail about on these slides just because I know that you know what free software is. But um, sometimes people who are in the communities are not aware of exactly what free software is or how did it show up and so on. So I still have these in here. The movement started in 83. Um, and since it started by American people in America, the foundation started. Free Software Foundation was founded in 85. It's supposed to be a worldwide organization, but it's mostly focused on uh, American perspectives, American values, American uh, challenges, and so on. So in Europe, there was, uh, we felt the need of having something focused on European policy and European perspectives. So in 2001, Free Software Foundation was created, uh, Free Software Foundation Europe was created, and in the, that same year in Portugal we created uh, the Portuguese uh, National Specific uh, Association. We launched it during um, a big uh, national event at the time, which was uh, the technical, technological city of the future, Porto, is going to be the next big thing. Two, two, two decades ago, that they were selling that idea, and we decided to launch in there the uh, Free Software Association. We are a nonprofit, uh, yeah. and our purpose is spreading the word about free software, really. Um, both in terms of communities, but also with a focus on laws, um, public administration, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's it. We focus not just on technical aspects, nor only just on social aspects. And of course, we only, we are voluntaries. So if more people are interested in, more interested, and and active in a certain thing that's going to, more work on that direction is going to happen because whomever works does the work and that's it. Um, we are, well, officially we are based on Oporto, but our scope is national. Free software is about freedom, it's not about price. Um, and when we talk about freedom, we talk about the four freedoms, and I know there are debates about Devin's uh, DFSG, and uh, we know there's uh, the open source definition, and there's a big fight about the differences between free software and open source and all that, and that doesn't really matter. What matters is that free software, in every definition, ends up as being the software that grants these four freedoms, and really that's what matters. It's the freedom to use the software however you wanted to use it, uh, to study how it works, to spread the copies of, of the software with or without your changes, and um, yeah, that's it. The fourth is, if you do changes, you can spread them too. Um, there's a difference between free and uh, non-paying and shareware and so on, but you all know that by now. There are many examples of what, examples of well-known free software, but we are here in, in a dev conf, so we all know that. There are many software licenses, and we are not advocate for 
copyleft or uh, non-copyleft or this license or that. As long as it is a free software license, we are okay with all that, all of them. Uh, but it is good to know which license do you choose for things. What what do you personally like the most and when you contribute, which license are you contributed, putting your contributions into? Uh, so that that's sort of important. Um, as an association, we did several things of several different types of uh, things. So we have political activity since the beginning. We worked with the Portuguese Parliament, we managed to do some things, including we managed to change some things on the transposition of the old copyright directive. We are doing, we are trying to do the same exactly uh, currently with, uh, with the new copyright directive uh, in Europe. Uh, we participated in the campaign against the software patents, which is going to return very soon, unfortunately. Um, we were the first country to have a law uh, for the use of open standards in public administration, which was a great victory in one hand, and it tastes sourly in the other hand, because the law exists, and we are very happy that we managed to create this law. And now the law is already old and still not fully implemented. So while the public administration has uh, a duty to only use um, open standards and make everything available under open standards, the fact is that if they don't comply with the law, there's no penalty. <laughs> so the law is well, we whine and we ask them to fix and so on, but it, it is a slow grinding process of trying to get them to follow the law. And there's always new stuff coming up, new portals, new documentations, new whatever. And even in the new stuff, they sometimes do it without publishing things using open uh, standards. We did uh, manage to pass a law against DRM. So as you might know, um, DRM in many places, including in Europe, is protected by law, which means that it's not just a question of it is annoying that you buy a DVD and you cannot play it on your Debian without installing uh, something that breaks that DRM. The problem here is actually that installing that software is illegal in Europe, but not in Portugal nowadays, because we manage it to say, if you are using this uh, for a legal purpose, then it is legal to use it. And if you are sharing the software for a legal purpose, it's legal to share it and so on. So. Since it is legal to watch the DVD that you bought on your PC, or even to make a private copy of it in Portugal, if it is to make a private copy, it is legal to use the libdvd CSS, for instance, which unfortunately is not legal in, in other countries. Uh, it took us almost two decades to manage to do it. Uh, I can go, if anyone wants the details, I can go over it. It, does, it might, might not be useful for now, but yeah, it's, it's a tiring, slow process to make our rights uh, <laughs> be heard, uh, but we should still strive to be able to live uh, a, a life without um, being forced to use something other than free software. Um, transparency in public administration, we made a portal to make it that easy. We created a free software CD to be 
spreads in the Portuguese schools uh, with, the help, with the support of the Ministry of Education at that time. We organize events or are present in events like this one, doing stuff like talking about why we love free software. Um, we are working currently on the current uh, copyright reform in Europe that is being transposed to the national law in many European countries, or in most of them yet, including in Portugal. Uh, and yeah, you probably know why already. Uh, why do we love free software? We love it, love it because it's flexible, it's reliable, it's stable, it's auditable, it's responsible, and the price is what most people focus on. Uh, it's it's free in many cases, but that's really not the major point of why to use free software. Um, so yeah, if you want details on why I claim it is one of these things, I'm happy to to argue about that. Uh, and just because it's free, obviously, it doesn't mean that it needs to be a hobby. There's plenty of people that live uh, their lives and earn their, their living with free software by developing free software or whatever. So there are many free software business models, both for companies or for developers and whatever. So uh, yeah, there, there are examples. There, the, sometimes people say that uh, a business around free software doesn't work, but that's just that there are many examples of free software as a business model working. There are many ways of how to do it, and sure, there are many ways how not to do it. So if you try to um, use free software but run your company just like if you were doing a proprietary software business, it's going to fail because obviously it's it's a different thing. But that's that. There are many examples of working um, business models. And all, the, all this is to say that uh, if you, like me, like free software, please get involved in whatever way you feel like, uh, whatever feels more natural to you to, to get involved with. With, but there are many opportunities in many different sorts of ways. If you cannot find your way in in one way, there are others. Um, we have ongoing campaigns like public money, public mo code. You probably already saw the posters and, and what, whatever we have out there. But basically, we uh, advocate that uh, on public administrations, if if we are the ones paying for the software, we should have access to the software. Basically, that's that's it. There is a very nice, easy, um, understandable uh, video on this website explaining exactly why this makes sense. If you ever want to convince anyone, don't you don't need to try to find arguments. The video is awesome in my opinion. <laughs> um, as a community, we have a mailing list, which is getting less and less used as time passes, because people don't use mailing lists anymore. I don't know. Uh, but we also have a presence in Matrix or Telegram. They are linked, so if you, you can be on one or the other, and you will be seeing the conversations going on in both. And that is a growing uh, community or growing conversation. These these numbers are for two days ago or something like that, and we have uh, 191 people on Matrix. People, bots, I don't know how many of them are real, but we have 191 in Matrix and 83 in Telegram. 
And, well, this is mostly focused to the Portuguese people. If you are not one of our members yet, get yourself <laughs> uh, into your site, become a member because it's cool. <laughs> And and if if you are not from Portugal or in Portugal and or don't want to focus locally, remember that in many countries there are associations like us, and there are also movements outside of of your country. So here in Europe, there's Free Software Foundation Europe, uh, and so on. So. There's, there's no reason not to be involved. I love soft software. This campaign, uh, particularly, uh, with these balloons and these um, hashtag, I love FS, uh, is something that started uh, by, uh, was started by Free Software Foundation Europe. We are doing it, running it every year. Sometimes we do topic specific campaigns. Uh, some years we decide to focus on particular projects and, and say thank you to them, but there are really no rules, right? You, I mean, uh, my challenge for you guys today is please let someone else know you love free software in any way. So if you like uh, Devin Maintainer, send them an email and say thank you for maintaining your packages because that's really cool. If you like a piece of software, tell them today thank you for keeping doing this. And I cannot stress this enough. People get enough hate through the year. You spend an year getting issues, issue reports and um, why isn't this fixed yet? And whatever, and 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 they people really love to get nice feedback too once in a while, especially when they are not expecting it. So, if you, um, I have an example. I, it's not on the presentation because it just happened to me a couple of hours ago. I did send a message today to a person that makes a software that I started using this year. I really like what he's been doing it, and I just sent a message to him saying, thank you for doing this, this is great. I love free software and I love you for doing this. And he replied me with a, wow, thank you so much. And I, I don't know, I mean, maybe he was really happy for five minutes and that's already cool, right? So please make someone happy today. Uh, <laughs> that would be nice. Um, People go on the web to say, I love free software. And different people have different reasons why they do it. Um, these are images of uh, different people saying to the world, I love free software because of something. And this last one was already today. Uh, one of uh, Ansol's members. Uh, just just sent this image and uh, changed my presentation just to add the current year image. Uh, but yeah, each person has different reasons why they love free software, but it, it's nice to appreciate it and also to feel appreciated by it. Um, and so has been making also every year something about it. Sometimes we do presentations, sometimes we do events, sometimes we go to events. Um, sometimes we just write blog posts saying what software we use and why do we love it. Uh, but we all, always try to use these uh, day in the calendar to do something about it. Um, there is also, well, I, I will publish the, this presentation and most of these images are actually links and you can follow it and search if you want. There's a bunch of, th these links to a bunch of videos, I'm not going to play them here, but there's a bunch of videos of people saying, 
on camera, why do they love free software? And once again, each person has its own reason to be here, but it's diversity is cool, right? So yeah, my challenge is if you love free software, do something about it today. Thank you. And if there are any questions? I, I have two questions. One, can you slide back to the photo with Jim so I can take a picture and send him? Yes. <laughs> uh, and the other, can you play the public code for with my uh, video? I can and I will. I, I think that is a video if everyone should see it because it's, it's really, well, I believe that it's really well made to explain in an easy way why public code is, um, why public money, public code makes sense. My wording here is going to be, um, there's no speakers in the room, so we are going to be listening to it in, in my laptop's uh, audio system, so it might not be too good. On the other hand, I think there's captions, so I'm going to try to I'm going to try to turn those captions on and maybe that will help. Imagine for a moment our government would treat our public infrastructure like our streets and public buildings same way it treats our digital infrastructure. Our members of parliament would work in a rented space where they weren't allowed to vote in favour of stricter environmental laws because the owner, a multinational corporation, didn't allow that kind of voting in its buildings. Nor would it allow a long overdue upgrade to more than 500 seats. But this means some members of parliament have to stay outside in the street. And a couple of blocks away, a brand new gym is well already being torn down just six months after it was built. It's being replaced with an exact replica at great expense. And the only difference, the new manufacturer will also provide street ball as a new feature. Meanwhile, every night through a hidden back door in the city hall, documents that contain sensitive information on citizens, from bank data to healthcare records, are being stolen. But no one is allowed to do anything about it because searching for back doors and locking them would infringe the sign of user agreement. And as absurd as this sounds, when it comes to our digital infrastructure, things like software and programs that our governments are using every day, this comparison is pretty accurate. Because mostly our administrations procure proprietary software. This means a lot of money goes into licenses that last for a limited amount of time and restrict our rights. We aren't allowed to use our infrastructure in a reasonable way. And because the source code of proprietary software is usually a business secret, finding security holes or deliberately installed backdoors is extremely difficult and even illegal. But our public administrations can do better if all publicly financed software were to be free and open source, we could use and share our infrastructure for anything and for as long as we wanted. We could upgrade it, repair it, and remodel it in any way to fit our needs. And because the open source in free software means that the blueprint is openly readable for everyone, this makes it much easier to find and close security problems. If something practical and reliable was created digitally, not only can you reuse the blueprint all over your country, but the actual thing itself can be deployed anywhere, even internationally. A great example of this is Fix My Street, originally developed in Great Britain as a free software app to report, view, and discuss local problems like potholes. It's now being used all over the world. Everyone benefits because new features and improvements are shared by everyone. If all our software were developed like this, we could stop struggling with restrictive licenses 
and could start thinking about where and how software could help us. We could concentrate on creating a better society for everyone. So, if you think that tomorrow's infrastructure should be in our own hands, help us now by sharing this video and visiting our website, publicco.eu. It's time to make our demand. Public money, public code. So this this video is uh, translated to many languages, both uh, audio and uh, the subtitles. So it might be useful to, to show to your local administrations and so on if you have the chance to do so. Um, there's also the the public money public code uh, website has lots of materials, including an extensive leaflet, mostly addressed to, well, once again, for you to show to your public administrators uh, why they should think about adopting uh, free software. Um, we actually don't have any more of those leaflets lying around because I think we only have one and it's already taken by someone, which is great. But there's uh, stickers and whatever about this campaign, so feel free to <laughs> to pick them and, and use them. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any more questions or comments, anything? No, so thank you and uh, there are postcards and stickers and whatever, so don't forget to thank someone for being involved with free software. Thank you. <laughs>